I wanted to do a quick video on the different IDEs, JetBrains Rider, Visual Studio Preview and Visual Studio Code. More specifically on how to run multiple projects, how to configure that as startup projects, how to apply hot reload and let's briefly go over some useful plugins for each IDE. So let's start out with my usual IDE, that's the JetBrains Rider IDE. And I'm running the brand website. I've got the API and the pre-render server as the only runnable projects in this solution. And then at the top I can run my usual projects, add a launch configuration to run or change them up for another launch profile from another project and so on. Let's see, I can edit the configuration. But that's not the way I edit these launch profiles. I just go to the properties, to the launch settings and edit them in JSON. And this one doesn't work too well alongside the debugger, so with the breakpoints. So that's why I kept that HTTPS one as well. So let's run that multi-project setup just by going, I could right click just run it like that or I could go in here and run one by one. So it tells me in here that it's running .NET Watch and this means if I make any changes in the Blazor project or even in the Razor class libraries then that's going to automatically uh, detect that, those changes and apply them to the running project in the browser. So let's say I open this newsletter subscription form and I just add a one, two, three in here. It will save when I click out. And then in here, the email address placeholder one, two, three. So if I undo that again, and it auto saves and then it should be gone. So that works pretty well and that's an eraser class library. It was a real pain before. Uh, every small change had to re rebuild, sometimes clean all of the class libraries involved and rebuild the running runnable project and then restart everything. That and the reason why I used that custom launch configuration is because Hot reload isn't too great in Blazor WebAssembly or even not supported. Let's quickly look at some other features. So you can see at the bottom that the projects are running in the terminal and I can easily access the NuGet package manager or the well unit tests git and then a terminal if I want to push my code. And then in terms of key maps I can use the similar ones as Visual Studio Code. Plugins. Well, it's all very customizable. The team I have, maybe you can see it, it's the Night Owl native, but I had to change a lot of colors, uh, which I can do in the editor. Um, do I have a lot of packages? If you go to the website of JetBrains slash Rider, you can get your 30 day trial. It's a very popular IDE for the game developers and in general for cross platform development. And that's also one of the reasons that I started with that because the company I was working for when I switched to .NET had given me a MacBook. So I had to choose between Visual Studio for Mac or Rider or Visual Studio Code. IntelliSense wasn't that creative. Let's scroll down. Then we see the features. We see refactoring, which is one of the major reasons that I'm sticking with JetBrains Rider EDE. It's just so reliable for refactoring. And the code suggestions are really cool and the analysis. Uh, 
the code suggestions they kind of suggest how to improve your code make it more readable or just better in general and then the analysis recently hinted me at trying to fetch too much nested data at once so it was um, alerting me for uh, two large queries so that was really nice that it could spot that i wouldn't have spotted it and what i wanted to show you is these all these tools that are included resharper rider and then these profilers and then the pricing so that's the yearly price a euro and one dollar is about the same so that's what you'd pay per year. I think I have this one, that ultimate. So divide that by 12 is about $14 per month. So reasonable. And the price seems to go down in the second year and the third year onwards. Then it's l less than 10 euros per month. Next up is Visual Studio Code, which I didn't start out with because back in the day the IntelliSense wasn't that great. Maybe I was missing some packages, but let's start with the extensions, the packages. So what I installed, let's see, I also have the Night Owl, so Night Owl is actually a originally a team for visual studio code dev kit this is really a game changer as of recently which gives me let's see so this is the normal file explorer which is a bit odd if you're uh, used to visual studio or or rider but now you also have this solution explorer which is a, like you're used to in visual studio and you can easily add projects based on those templates. So if I wanted to start an empty Blazor WebAssembly standalone app, I can just do that. The new interactive modes, I don't think that's supported yet. And that is also not supported in JetBrains Rider. So that's ex exclusively for Visual Studio users. As of now, if you go to a specific project, so class library, then you get more relevant file types, classes, enums, interfaces. Here at the top, you can add a new project or a new solution folder. So that's pretty similar as JetBrains Rider or Visual Studio. Key maps are pretty cool. So Ctrl P is to go to any file Control shift p is to run anything let's see and you can even add new projects in here if i do that you get that template list again what i want to see is can i quickly run these things so build rebuild clean that's all cool i don't see ah debug start new instance start without debugging that's pretty similar as visual studio as well let's try that and that seems to work fine let's try the same for the let's see that seems to work fine i do wonder is it picking the hot reload or the regular one Ooh. yeah if it crashes on this code then it's clearly not using the hot reload so it crashes on this code and that's because i'm not awaiting this task that delay but why i'm not awaiting this task that delay is because if i would await that the ui would freeze for until that continues so that's not what i wanted but apparently the debugger cannot handle this that problem also occurs in visual studio itself so it's not because it's not because i'm running in vs code that it does indicate that i'm not running the hot reload because the hot reload configuration has no problem with that the run and debug and there i can similarly as in the jetbrains rider i can just 
select which projects to run add a configuration and in here you see the launch profile with the hot reload so that's actually the one i want run this one api so that's running and then i could stop it if i wanted to rerun it and uh, let's now try to run the hot reload as well and that should be no problem and then this one appears the front end and then i can toggle uh, between these two stop them re so this was that task.delay pop-up that the debugger crashed on but for the hot reload that's just fine to visual studio i've got the preview version to run dotnet 8 top you can run multiple startup projects easily by configuring startup projects or right clicking the project configure startup projects set a startup project you can do all that if you open that, my only runnable ones is the API. You can do start, start without debugging, which the brand, let's say I do the start one, then it's also going to crash on that task.delay. So let's just try it. And then it's going to open one browser window for each project which uh, is a bit odd because if I try to then drag it into the same one it suddenly stops debugging which is not ideal and it also opens two terminals which is fine so the API and then the pre-render server without hot reload so that's gonna go that's gonna crash and there it is, I'm running in debug mode. So I'm going to configure that to run without debugging. So going to start the project and just the pre-render server is gonna go without debugging and then I'm not gonna have that problem. Apply, okay, and let's start that. How many windows do we have? Okay, just the same ones, that's good. And then I can toggle that hot reload, which actually works. I was surprised because there's a lot of comments about it, like it's broken or something. But it seems to work fine for me, so I'm going to do the one, two, three change in my... I'm gonna hit save now because I haven't configured that automatically to automatically save. If I apply that, we got email address 123. I didn't have to rebuild or rerun anything. This pop-up is displaying and everything is still running. So that's great. Let's undo that one. Save again. And that 123 should be gone. So the hot reload is working. I don't know why so many people are complaining about it. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you're still having trouble with hot reload. And let's now try that... A custom hot reload launch profile let's see so if I run this one alone I could choose for the HTTPS which is the regular one and then the hot reload so if I select that I could just run it with my launch profile my custom one but there's no clear way for me to set that as the default one so now it's a single start project, which is fine. If I now click, uh, sorry, multiple, configure startup projects, I select it back to multiple and I do start. And then this one, start without debugging, apply. Okay, if I now start, It should have chosen that hot reload, you, see, you saw that, so at the top it's saying hot reload in the thingy, which is cool, but it's not obvious to me that that is now the default uh, launch profile, 
I've been searching for answers on how to select a different launch profile. And apparently, yeah, it just takes the last one I yeah, set. So I think with that, I covered how to configure and run multiple projects and how to apply custom hot reload or regular the hot reload. I wanted to add, I don't have any plugins in Visual Studio, so there's no reason to go over that. I do think you can add similar plugins as in JetBrains Rider, like those nice uh, resharper and all those things. I don't think it's free. So that makes that I run out of excuses to not use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. It comes down to preference and customizability probably with the teams and all that things and the key maps and that might be the differentiator let me know what you think uh, do you consider visual studio code or, or which is your preferred ide and did i miss something because i'm not used to visual studio or visual studio code so maybe you have a lot more insight into that let me know in the comment section down below i will export my uh, jetbrains rider ide settings plugins and i will do the same for my visual studio code not only for my future self if i were to switch computers but also for you so make sure to check out my patreon and become a member on my website if you want to access even more code then you can simply sign up don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out and i hope you see me in the next one